So welcome to our monthly uh, Goleta Wrap meeting open to community members. My name is Landon Rank. I'm the Associate Director with SB Act. Um, I think I know most of the names on this call, but I encourage you to go ahead and introduce yourself in the chat window um, just for those who may not know you. Um, I'm joined by my colleague Kai Tilly, um, and then I'll also uh, let Chuck introduce himself. Hello, uh, Chuck Flax from the City of Goleta. I'm the Homelessness Services Coordinator. Uh, yeah, and I'm happy to answer questions and respond to concerns on this call or at any time. And then I also see we have the mayor with us, Mayor Perotti. Welcome. Thanks for being with us. Um, so just to start today, a couple of general announcements. First is uh, what we were referencing at the beginning of this call. Uh, we did launch a neighborhood navigation center in the city of Goleta. Um, and so what this is, is it's a one-stop shop for people experiencing homelessness to access all kinds of different services, um, everything from housing navigation and case management to uh, meals to health care. Um, and so uh, this is at Christ Lutheran Church on Mondays, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, and we've got folks over there right now. Um, there's also a, a really nice news story that I'll put in the chat window uh, if you're interested to learn more. But it's just something we're just trying to let community members know because this is a, a good place to try to direct people experiencing homelessness in Kalita um, as a consistent, uh, easy place for them to access the services that they might need. Um, so again, that's Mondays, 11 a.m. at Christ Lutheran Church. Um, I wanted to turn it to, since we have Evan Bauman with uh, the Housing Authority of the County of Santa Barbara, I wanted to turn it to Evan briefly just to share an update about the Buena Tierra project at the former Super 8 Motel. Yes, thank you. Sorry, I had mouse malfunction there for a second. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, Super 8, I think it's been announced, has been pushed out uh, to February now, uh, beginning the middle of February, and then we would have 90 days for 100% lease up there. And I know there were some questions, uh, but it has been released of part of our service provider. It has been awarded to Good Samaritan. That's great. Thank you for any, that. Any questions? Yeah, that's basically where we're at. We're just in the roadblock as far as uh, remediation of some of the soil samples, and we're still waiting on final tests, but everything looks good uh, with the work that we're going to have to do to be compliant. Uh, again, middle of February, lease up with 90 days or maximum 100%. Can you say a little more, Evan, about what the anticipated services will be? As far as from Good, Good Samaritan? Yeah. Yeah, just 100% uh, uh, Good Samaritan support for all the tenants there. Um, there are going to be six social workers assigned. And uh, do we have anybody that can want to speak in more detail? Um, that service provider contract was awarded to Good Samaritan, and there will be six on-site staff members there. Um, beyond that, we're also going to have 24-hour um, security service there as well uh, for the first three years. So yeah, hit me with questions if you want. That's that's basically where we're at. Um, we'll be we'll release all the details as far as uh, services that were that are going to be provided as far as Good Samaritan, and then obviously Cottage Recuperative Care is going to be involved in that as well, since they do have eight designated units there. So questions, please. <laughs> I have too much information to just uh, say it off the cuff. So there's Will specific anyone be able to come, any of the tenants be able to come there before mid-February or is it absolutely no one until then? Yes, no one until mid-February. Thank you. But we're the power, we are very confident that that is where we're at. That's conservative. So. Uh, and again, as of mid-February, roughly, you know, February 15th, 13th, 12th, moving forward, we would be 100% leased uh, all 60 units in 90 days. Any other questions for Evan? Okay, back to you, Landon. All right. 
Well, we're bummed to hear that's pushing back, but we appreciate that you all are continuing to move things forward. Um, let's see, the other thing to check in about was that two weeks ago, um, Goleta, the city of Goleta hosted a homelessness standing committee um, to discuss um, some of the parking concerns, specifically in the Pacific Oaks and Phelps neighborhoods. And so I'm gonna turn it to Chuck to just share a little bit about that. Yeah, so the we have a, a kind of semi-regular meeting of the Homelessness Issues Standing Committee when issues present themselves. And at the request of residents of the that community, some people call it the Elwood neighborhood, um, we had about 30 people attend to express concerns about a large number of vehicles parking overnight, both on Pacific Oaks Road and Phelps Road. Um, I actually live in the neighborhood too, and have observed this growing uh, issue. What's not entirely clear is whether this is a, so much of a homelessness issue or a parking issue. So we've divided it into two. Um, in regards to the homelessness issue, I'm working with uh, the outreach providers as well as specifically the safe parking program. Um, looks like Cora is actually here from safe parking. Um, I know they've made contact with quite a few of the folks, even folks who weren't necessarily obviously homeless um, and have been trying to encourage them to move into safe parking spaces. Um, they'll continue to <clears throat> provide services to those folks as um, when they're available uh, or when people accept them. The, the larger issue of the large number of people parking overnight on those streets, we're going to address through the ordinance committee. So, um, Public Works staff and I are working on some resolutions to determine how we're going to handle overnight parking on those streets. Um, and this only really became a concern when, for whatever reason, a community of people living in RVs decided to start hanging out there. Um, and it's sort of unclear to me why there, why now. Um, but the city's response will be to, to do some kind of enforcement of large vehicle uh, parking on on those streets. Um, we haven't yet determined what that's going to look like, but we are responding. Thank you, Chuck. Mayor, if you have anything else to add, or <clears throat> I do. Um, I just want to thank you, um, Chuck, for uh, the presentation that night, and um, I was very pleased to see the turnout. And uh, you know, we we didn't know what to expect. Uh, we know we knew that the neighbors were concerned and frustrated, as we were as well. And um, so we opened it up to a special meeting, and we held it um, a committee meeting, held it in our council chamber. So there's plenty of room for everybody. Um, and I think the turnout was. Um, went well and I think they walked away um, with a smile on their face knowing that we are doing what we can and um, and trying to help um, the community and the folks uh, experiencing homelessness and um, you know it, it it did come up and I am glad I see and I sorry I'm not seeing your name on the screen but I know you're with um, UCSB um, police, I believe. And, um, you know, it did come up the question of working with the university because they're wondering, folks asked of whether the university has any input into, are they parking over um, on property that belongs to them within um, that area? Um, so I, I I don't know if someone can answer that question, but I, we, I personally hadn't thought about that uh, so, connection. So the issue there, and uh, Officer Gaston, I don't know whether you'll know anything about this, but there's a uh, UC housing project for faculty and and staff, I believe. It's a they're single family homes, um, primarily or attached homes, and there's a lot that I believe is managed by the Coastal Commission um, that is on university property. There's currently no signage that indicates that that's a lot for beach access other than just on the parking lot itself. So Mayor, one of the things we're looking at with the Public Works Department is using city funds to pay for signage to direct people who are using the Elwood Mesa area and the UC uh, SLU area um, for parking purposes to go to that lot. Because I think there's at least 20 or more spaces there and it's rarely full. Um, so that's definitely one of the one of the remedies that we're proposing. 
That's that's great to hear. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, no, I and, and and I think the staff heard us pretty loud and clear that um, it, we think that this should be uh, something that is looked at in the ordinance committee and not um, our particular committee that we held that night. So, um, and Stuart Kasdan, Council Member Kasdan, is part of the ordinance committee. So, that's that's how it went <laughs> that evening. Um. And then I don't know, Cora, if you're yeah, able to... I was going to ask the same thing. Cora, I, I, are yeah. you able to respond at all based on the outreach that, that um, New Beginning Safe Parking Program has done about the RV prevalence there and, and what you're hearing? Kind of, you don't have to obviously give us any, any privileged information, but it kind of a sense of what you're hearing. Um, I'm sorry, I sort of came in at the... Um in sort of in the middle. So what area are we talking about? So this is the, the this is the large number of RVs parking on Pacific Oaks oh, okay. and then a smaller number of RVs parking on Phelps. Right, right. And right. it seems like it's a fairly, you know, the yeah. people camping in those spots in their cars has been going on for years, but the the large number of RVs is a fairly recent phenomenon. And I don't know whether you've heard kind of the rumors or the you know, the reasons that people have been talking about. Well, um, as you know, Chuck, we, Deborah and I were out there a couple of weeks ago, and when we were out there, there was nobody there, and you were, you know, telling us all these different places to drive, and we were driving to all these different areas, but um, it, but when we do, when we are out there, and we do see people that are parking out there, and we have the opportunity to talk to them, it's basically the same reasons that we have discussed in the past, um, and, and it really hasn't, hasn't changed too much, you know, they're out there for a very, and, and a number of reasons. Um, rents are too high. Uh, their vehicles are um, unable to be registered or insured for whatever reason. Um, you know, just it's the same reasons that we've discussed in the past. It's nothing new and different. I don't know if that helps, but that's it's the same story pretty much. Yeah, thank you, Cora. Yeah. Uh, Mary, did you have a question? Um, yes, I just wondered what is the wait time for safe parking? Um, because I had a fellow this morning interested in getting safe parking. Is it months or weeks or years or days? No, it's it's days. If it could be with any anywhere between a week and a month, depending on okay. the the you know the depending on if he has all the documents required to come into our program. And if he does, then we can go ahead and get him enrolled in our program. And it, you know, it's we're we're booking out about a month. And if we have cancellations, then we always call people to to schedule them to come in earlier. Okay, a month. Thank you. Sure. Taylor. Yes, I think I might have a reason why you guys have been seeing a little bit of an up, uptick in there on the traffic for the RVs over there is because I know that Target has been pushing a lot of the people that have been in RVs out of their parking lots recently because we own the joining property next door and they've been doing a huge push on that. So that's probably a good reason why. I've noticed that a lot of those RVs that I've seen are the same RVs that were at Target previously. Thank you for that, Taylor. That's I appreciate that. And and, and I, I do think that that it's something that we as a city ought to be doing more of. This was discussed at the committee, uh, talking to the 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 business management business owners about how to how to manage this. Um, and that is a good point too. That when we do do outreach and we're doing all that area out there by Phelps and Pacific Oaks, we also hop over to the, that street that's behind Target. And we do outreach to the RVs that are parked out there as well. So that is on our outreach route. Any other questions or comments on this specific area? So we want to keep encouraging community members, if you hear anything or complaints or questions about what's going on in that neighborhood, um, please direct them to Chuck or direct them to this call. We really do want to keep talking to those community members um, and hearing updates from them since they're there on the hours when we're not. Uh, so this is going to be- The only thing I would add is that we did receive a proposal from the Safe Parking Program to expand their operations in Goleta. Um, and so we are going to be reviewing that as a staff and, and eventually bringing forward a recommendation to council. So that's exciting. That is exciting. Thank you. All right. Um, and then the last uh, just general announcement I had was just an upcoming date. Um, 
in two weeks from today, uh, also at noon, we'll have an all call wrap meeting. Um, and this is actually a South County wide meeting. So this is a chance uh, if you're interested to just learn more about all the homelessness initiatives happening throughout Goleta, Santa Barbara, Carpinteria, just the whole region and how we're all trying to work together. Um, because a lot of these issues, uh, including vehicular homelessness, are very much region-wide. This isn't just specific to the city of Goleta, so we really are trying to coordinate all of our efforts. So we encourage okay, you, you to go back. Um, you should go back one slide on your presentation. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. We encourage you to come join us uh, on Zoom on on the eleventh at noon. Yeah, I would echo that. I, you know, the Goleta is just one small piece of this puzzle. Uh, you know, we adjoin the University of California, we adjoined the, the county and the city of Santa Barbara. They all come together right around Goleta. Um, and these issues around homelessness and homeless encampments don't stick to just one jurisdiction. So the idea, and we really appreciate SB uh efforts to really bring all the different partners together to try to solve this in a, in a regional way. So with that, we'll go to some updates from our uh, outreach providers. And why don't we just go ahead and start with the safe parking program. Um, Cora, are there any other updates that your team would want to share? Uh, no, not at the moment. I know that there was some concern about somebody that was parking over um, over there. And we've, we've continued to try to track that person down. We haven't reached him yet. Um, the person in the Atlanta, I think it was a Georgia license plate. So we're still, we're still actively seeking them out. But um, other than that. Not much really happened last week as it was a holiday week, except for that that particular outreach. But other than that, we're getting back at it this week. Thanks, Cora. Um, then let's go to our Good Samaritan teams. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Todd with Good Samaritan Shelter. Last week, the Arbor team made two shelter referrals to Hedges. Uh, we were also able to get two more clients document ready. Uh, also happy to announce that this week, one of our most vulnerable clients will be getting housed. It's a huge win. Um, due to the three-day work week last week, we were limited on time, um, but our main focus um, was on the slough in between San Jose Creek and San Pedro Creek. There is a growing concern of fire hazards in several of the encampments. Uh, we came across four fire pits that are active at night. Um, lighter fluid gasoline and kindling were present at all these sites and a lot of the um, the pits were very close to their tents which presents a, a fire hazard as well and that's all I have Fulcrum has been detailed with uh, photos and thank you so uh, Mayor Purdy just for your benefit and also for the community's benefit outside the city limits of Goleta kind of south and west of the of the old drive-in along Moore Memorial um, there's a large encampment um, and it's sort of divided into like 10 different areas. And I know Deputy Roush, you may you have more details on this, but I, I do believe there's cleanup operations going forward. Do you, did you want to maybe report on that? I don't have an exact date. I know that they're working that property is owned by the gas company. It is in the county area, but it's right on the border. Um, we walked there a week or two ago and yeah, the fire danger is, is probably the worst I've seen in our area and along with stolen items, um, bicycles, computers, power tools, um, dismantled vehicles. Um, it's, it's pretty extensive, but the, the company that owns that property is in the progress of cleaning it up. I think they're just working on a date and getting crews set up so we can, uh, we can advise when that's going to be happening. And in terms of, uh, in terms of the occupants of the encampment, are they, are you leaving them in place until the actual cleanup is going forward or have they been uh, moved on? Uh, we advised everyone we came in contact with of trespass because it is private property and we have an authority letter for that, that private property, but um, without them really anywhere to go and we don't have a time to clean up, we advise them a trespass and if they return, they're subject to citation or arrest, um, but we didn't remove them at that exact time just because of the sheer amount of stuff that we wanted them to start cleaning up. So we'll we'll keep updating on that. Um, let's go. I don't know if oh yeah, Ellen is here from CityNet. Um, biggest update is my partner Coral is back in the office after a couple weeks out. So we're really excited that he's back. Um 
makes I can't go out alone to do outreach and see clients. So it makes it a lot easier to you know see people and get stuff done. Um, I would say our main focus has been just getting documents for clients. We have a lot of SSI and SSDI hearings coming up, so a lot of you know tracking down medical records from like the seventies. Uh, stuff like that. I think I've been in Social Security more times than the Social Security staff this week. Um, so that's what we've been working on. Definitely a lot of documentation. We have two clients at Path and one client at Hedges right now. So spending a lot of time with them as well. Thank you. And Lana, is it appropriate for me to point out a hot spot that I know that the um, Ellen has been working on? Yeah, feel free. Um, so if I could share my screen, maybe I can. Let me just see. Chuck, while you're bringing that up, Ellen, do you have yeah. a, uh, do we have any beds available at PATH, Kalita beds currently? We do not, no. There we go. Um... So I, can you all see my pointer along Surfrider way here? Yes. Um, just to the south of this is an area that is actually owned by the city of Goleta. It was uh, at one time set up to be a street. And there's a, a sort of, un, well, I don't know the exact number of people, but I do know that that um, CityNet has been working on this encampment. We've received probably six or seven requests for services from the public. Um, and just so people know, uh, you know, things are a little bit different when we're dealing with pro property that's owned by the public versus uh, the the private property. Private property, um, so let me stop the sharing here. Here we go. Private property is a little easier to move people along because of, um, you know, private property law and trespassing. Um, in, in the case of public property, we really do rely on the availability of shelter. And unfortunately, at this time, our shelters are, I mean, it's good for the people in the shelters, but we don't have enough shelter beds. And so it's difficult to to find alternatives for people. Um, but I do know that Ellen is, has made contact with those folks um, and is working with them. And, um, you know, as she mentioned, you know, helping them get the right paperwork and moving towards housing subsidies. And so it's, you know, it's something that we're aware of. Um, if you're a person who's concerned about that particular site, it is something we're aware of and we're working on. Thanks, Chuck. All right. So I think with that, we'll go ahead and open it up uh, for community members to share questions or areas of concern. Um, I would like to know uh, how many actual people, uh, other than the people that were working there, came to the Neighborhood Navigation Center um, at the church, at the Lutheran Church, and why that area was chosen. Uh, there's no bus service within a mile or something from there, and it's not very convenient for people who don't have cars and transportation. Yeah, no, it's a good question. So we have vetted, we vetted probably close to 40 different properties. Um, and the hardest thing is just getting property owners who are willing to say yes uh, to allowing us to be there. Um, the church has been very inviting to us. Um, and then the other reason uh, why uh, we, we decided we would go for it was just knowing how many people are uh, living in their vehicles in the city of Goleta. Um, there's a little bit more mobility among this population than you might see in, say, downtown Santa Barbara. Um, and so we're we're sort of treating this as a pilot, and we're going to see how it goes for probably the next six weeks or so. Um, I the, the first week we had one individual. Um, I was told that when my staff member got there today, there were two people waiting. So I don't know how many more have showed up yet today, but we'll, I'll find out um, after today. Um and yeah, and we're just kind of spreading the word right now. And so we'll see how it goes over the next couple of weeks. So last week, how many showed up? Just the one individual last week. Just one. Yeah. With all those people helping. Yeah. So yeah, help us to spread the word, please. Um, if anyone's interested, we have these sort of laminated cards that have info about the services that are there and the day and time. Um, so just let me know if you'd like, uh, and I'm happy to drop these off to anyone to it's just something you can hand out to people as you see them. 
you know, one of the purposes of these uh, neighborhood navigation centers is to increase the opportunity for our outreach people to have contact with their their clients. Um, and so this site provides a place and a time where meetings can be set. And some outreach providers are able to transport people to the site as well. So it's, you know, it, it's in many cases, outreach can be hit or miss. And, and so this time period every week creates some stability that allows us to, to reach people. Are there a lot more people um, to service providers to help there than are at the uh, St. Athanasius Thursday shower meeting? Because there are a lot of people that come to that. Yeah, uh, no, th not necessarily, but this, the St. Athanasius Center is not uh, a center that's being, um, you know, it's not being supervised or uh, managed by either SB Act or the city of Goleta. It's a, it's a separate site that Showers of Blessing provides. Um, we're happy to that that goes on. We, we support it completely. Um, but this is a site that the city of Goleta has actually set up using city of Goleta resources. Um, and we're really trying to create a, a, a place within the city that people can come to. Is, is this the same kind of thing that it used to be, or maybe it still is at the Isla Vista Community Center? I'm familiar with what you're talking about. Are you talking about Mary and Mary's lunch? Maybe that was before uh, COVID. <laughs> that and maybe also a coordinated entry point, if that's what you're thinking of. Um, and outreach providers are can serve as outreach um, entry points at any time. So they're able to do an assessment and an intake wherever they are. Thank you. So same. Other questions or areas of concern? I'm not seeing any at the moment. Maybe I'll give um, Officer Gaston a chance to just share some updates about what he's been working on um, with UCPD. Thanks, if I can get my computer to work here. Sorry about that. No worries. Uh, so currently, um, we've been working about four or five uh, encampments within the grounds of UCSB. Um, our mandate is to respond to these challenges in a tiered holistic and inclusive uh, response protocol. So we've engaged Fernando and Todd to help us out with uh, Good Sam to come out and we've been having some successes here and there. One of the struggles we're having is some of the encampments that we are getting clean. We're having a few people come back and inhabit them. Um, I would like to circle back to Mayor Peretti's uh, discussion about parking. I, I'm unaware of any parking calls for service that we've had. Typically speaking, um, we'll get a call about someone that appears to be living in a vehicle or something like that. I've, I'm unaware of any that have happened within like the last six months. We know that they're probably happening. They could be happening in an era where it's like a student or something like that. Um, but uh, nothing has shown up on radar with regards to that area. I suspect it's going to be something that happens outside of the law enforcement community, maybe the stakeholders or a chancellor's office or something like that, that is uh, going to have to intervene uh, to do something with that. But um, And lastly, all of the, the contacts we've been making in the field with uh, Good Sam and some of my officers, uh, co-workers, uh, none of them seem to be UCSB students. Uh, these are these are community members that are uh, not affiliated with UCSB. So, thank you, Landon. Thank you. So I'm not seeing any other comments at the moment. Um, I'll go ahead, Mary. I was just going to say, we've been having about 50 people every Tuesday at our luncheons at the Isla Vista Community Center. And um, I would guess about uh, 15 of those are still people living on the ground um, in Isla Vista. Uh, and um, others are thankfully being housed at uh, Hedges and 
and quite a few are from the lofts. And um, so we're very thankful for Fernando and Todd and all the gang there that come over and help us, um, you know, get those people thinking ahead. Um, um, the ones that are, I am sad about the February date on the on the um, super eight because some of those people that are living on the ground are people that were going to go in there. And so they're going to have a cold, wet winter, but, um, but I, I do love it that things seem to be progressing and people do seem to be uh, getting into housing. Um, thanks to Todd and Fernando and all the others at Good Sam. What are the times uh, for your, Luncheon? The luncheon is from 11.30 to 12.30. We always get there about quarter to 11 and set up. We're so very thankful for Maya and uh, her letting us use the community center there for the tables and chairs. And we all sit outside and enjoy a sunny day and have a lot of good, um, good chats. The people are very happy to be there. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. So maybe just one final announcement. Um, we do have the point in time count coming up. Uh, so this is every year in the end of January, uh, the County of Santa Barbara conducts this count of everyone who's experiencing homelessness, whether it's in their vehicles, in the shelters, or on the streets um, over the course of one night. So this coming year, it'll be on Wednesday, January 24th. Um, and we'll be looking for hundreds of volunteers throughout the whole county um, to wake up very early. Uh, I don't have the exact time yet, uh, but to to be the volunteers to actually go out and count individuals. Um, so I don't have a sign up link just yet, but that is forthcoming probably in the next couple of uh, the next week or so. Um, and and from there, then uh, there there will be trainings like in January. Um, we really want to encourage you all, since you are the people that are the most invested in these issues, to to come out with us. Um, where we'll be looking for lots and lots of volunteers. So just mark your calendar for that date, um, and 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 be on the lookout for email reminders. And I'm not seeing anything else, so we can end early today. Um, we will have another community concerns meeting uh, likely in early January. I don't think we're going to have one in late December, um, but I'll, I'll touch base with Chuck and uh, then follow up with you all. So, so please stay tuned. All right. Thanks, Thanks everybody for coming. Everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays. Bye-bye. Mary, I got your message. Oh, she's Thank gone. you. Bye. Bye-bye.